What up guys, it's Matt. And uh, just wanted to shoot this. I haven't shot anything uh, in a long time. It feels like a really long time. Um, just because I've been really busy really since uh, graduation and everything. Um, enjoyed some time off. Went on a little vacation. Came back. Um, had some family, uh, personal emergency kind of stuff happen, so uh, just a little preoccupied. Had an issue trying to get my license uh, to go through, and it's like uh, the state board doesn't always notify you like in a timely manner, so you're sitting there waiting, 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 and then you finally figure like, hey, I should probably call, and you call, and it's like, oh, hey, we need this. Um, so it's kind of like, ugh. So, uh, but uh, if you follow my Instagram, uh, you probably saw me post, so I did uh, finally on July 6th get my license to practice for Arizona. So, now that's underway, um, I am still looking for jobs at the moment. Um, I did get a phone interview a few weeks back. Uh, unfortunately, that position wound up going um, to an internal candidate, which kind of seemed weird that it actually made it to a public posting uh, when it went to an internal candidate. Um, but that's just how it goes. I have a few applications out right now, not all of them in Tucson. Uh, I have kind of expanded my search outwards uh, to Phoenix. So I'm uh, just kind of waiting to see. It's been about a week since I put in a, a couple. So uh, like I said, just uh, sitting here right now, again, enjoying the time home with my kids. My daughter is home with me. Uh, for the summer, so I've uh, just been enjoying taking her to the splash pad and, and stuff, so uh, that's just a quick update, not what I wanted to talk about today uh, as a video today. The video <clears throat> I want to be about, um, which seems to be kind of a hotbed topic right now, the AARC Summer Forum, I believe it's still going on in San Antonio right now, um, and I guess the big news from a couple of days ago uh, was that New York State uh, introduced legislation uh, that would require a baccalaureate level degree in either respiratory care or um, like a board approved uh, alternative uh, bachelor level program uh, in order to obtain a state license. And apparently there's there's a grandfather clause, so if you're already there or whatever um, and already hold a license, it wasn't going to matter. Uh, that's that's pretty big news. Um, New York was the first to do it uh, with nursing as well. Uh, it just, I think, passed in December of 17, so I don't know if that was slated to take effect on December or uh, January 1st of 2018 or if it's a year off, like sometimes legislation takes an entire year uh, and starts on January 1st. Uh, I don't know the details, but that was called BSN in 10. And yeah, that was uh, basically it said something to the effect of um, nurses who were already holding New York license were exempt. Nurses who are uh, student nurses, if you were already enrolled in a program prior to the passing, um, you were also exempt regardless of your uh, degree level. Um, but basically moving forward, any one um, who wanted to apply for a license after that fact, so whether you're new to the state or or you know, enrolling in a program in New York after that, you were going to be required to have a BSN uh, in order to get your license. Um, so it's a big deal because respiratory emulates a lot of that kind of side of nursing. Um, what's crazy is that nursing uh, or the nursing lobby is really, really, really strong and huge uh, and powerful. Uh, you know, just look at um, nurse practitioners uh, in some states now are being able to operate independently. That's a huge deal uh, for like a mid-level practitioner. So despite that, so, so knowing how powerful that lobby is for nursing, uh, that legislation took 14 years before it finally was approved. So New York State has been pushing that concept for, for a decade and a half before it finally got approved. Uh, and I imagine that from where that started to where it wound up, obviously there was amendments to whatever legislation in order to get, you had to make everyone happy 
in order to get everybody to agree on something. So, so then coming back to the respiratory then, uh, what does that mean? Well, again, it just got introduced. Does that mean it's passed? No, as a matter of fact, I don't even have a link yet to the legislation. So I, I haven't actually read what it says. Uh, however, the summation I read um, from someone who was in attendance basically said that it, it would require you to have the bachelor's level in respiratory care or uh, an acceptable alternative in order to license, period. Um, so again, the BSN 10, basically you can graduate from an associate program and get licensed, but within 10 years of, I don't know if it's the initial license or your graduation, you're required to have a, a BSN. So the Bachelor's for Respiratory in New York, that seems like a pretty extreme example right now. As far as my opinion on it, uh, you know, it seems like there's been a lot of discussion, especially like in the last like year uh, that I've been kind of following about getting BSRTs or whatever, or, uh, you know, people wanting the bachelor level to be the entry level to the field, uh, how that would work. Like, and it's very odd because we're in a very weird place right now. You have so many associate programs in existence and a lot of these associate programs now are admittedly working with um, colleges to work on degree completions uh, for, for uh, BSRTs. So it's definitely heading that way. Uh, but then you have this large population of people um, who've been therapists for years who, you know, they're so far into their careers or maybe they're so close to retiring to all of a sudden just pull up and be like, nope, like I know you're a year from retiring, but you got to go get a bachelor's. Seems crazy. It's a very weird um, thing. Uh, AARC and Coarc, I believe, did agree that uh, there will no longer be any new associate programs being able to develop. So, um, if a school decides they want to establish a respiratory therapy program, it has to be at the baccalaureate level. Coarc will no longer accredit associate programs that are new. So that doesn't mean an associate program that is coming up at the end of their accreditation term at 10 years or whatever it is, can't recertify because they're already established. So um, so what do I think it means? Uh, I mean, moving forward, I can't deny that that's the way it should go. Um, it will push the profession forward. Uh, what does that mean for someone like me right now who just graduated from an associate program? Uh, I'm not really concerned at this time. I mean, just if I could be absolutely honest with you, um, there already are, uh, you know, some hospitals that really want to see that and maybe that gives you a leg up. Should you or should you not get a BSRT? Guys, that's really gonna depend on you. What do you wanna do? Or what do you need to do in order to make yourself a more, um, you know, desirable candidate? You know, especially for all my SoCal peeps out there, like, that is one saturated market uh, and you want to stack as much as you can in your favor, like it probably makes sense to try to get it. When hospitals have massive pools of people to pick from, you know, the people with experience are, are, are usually pretty good. Um, people with education are going to be good. Uh, they can really be picky and then even then a lot of the hospitals at that point can establish their own policy and say, hey, if you don't have an, a bachelor level, then we're not going to hire you. And that's well within, especially um, your, your private sector, any privately owned corporate hospital, it's more than allowed to do that. It's not like it's unethical or whatever. Uh, you know, and it's weird. It's, it's, it's almost this like, this argument on the scale, it's, it's like a subset of the CRT versus RRT argument that's kind of been going on. Um, you know, you had OJT people from back in the day, pre-associate programs, and then, or maybe they were CRT certified, you know, and then not wanting to go back and get RRTs. And, you know, I know some hospitals, especially bigger hospitals, um, kind of put the stamp down like, hey, if you don't achieve RRT by this point, um, you can't work here anymore. And I could see how that could rub people the wrong way. I mean, especially if someone's a CRT, but they have 30 years of experience and they're going to go fire them. It's like, you know, it's just a, not a measure of were they a good or bad therapist. Um, 
you know, I don't know what level of complacency or attitude plays into some of that too, but uh, and then again, ad admittedly, I have no clue what it would take for someone who's been a CRT for 30 years to to go as, as simple as like, well, I'm already a CRT. Can I just go take the RRT test, the, the ClinSims? Or do they have to retake both exams? Um, or are they so far out? I mean, would they be required to have to go through a program? You know, I, I can understand it. If some, someone told me after 30 years that I like, hey, you have to go back to school, pay Ten to twenty thousand dollars, and then pay another four hundred dollars, so you can keep your job. Like I'd probably tell them to go screw themselves. Uh, you know, if I was simply told, like, "Hey, we we see you have a thirty-year track record. You know, pay the three ninety to take your TMC, your CSC, uh, and then you're golden." You know, and even then, I still like still maybe rub someone the wrong way. Four hundred dollars is not like uh, you know dropping a bucket. Uh, it's, Kind of a significant sum of money uh, not something that I, I like spending but so anyway it's you know it's it, it's kind of a touchy subject there's a lot of people have a lot of passionate beliefs um, I do believe it's the future how close is it in the future I have no idea um, AARC wanted 80% of all therapists by 2020 holding a bachelor's now if you read that goal statement, that was literally like any bachelor's, not BSRTs. Um, so, I mean, do I think they're going to hit it? Maybe. Again, that's the trick. Uh, if you've never taken statistics, you have to go and look at how things are measured. And so one of the ways that some groups plan to hit that statistic, because BSN said the same thing back in 2010, that uh, they wanted... Um, 80% of all nurses to hold BSN specifically. And I think as of 2015 or 17, I can't remember, all these articles started bleeding together that they were only at like 55, 60% um, to that goal. And at this point now, uh, they're only, what, a year and a half from trying to achieve that. And so the only way you can get kind of that massive number without either like a really crazy pass right now mandate, which would probably uh, not happen just given the way legislation slow and works they're kind of counting on the baby boomers to retire and I imagine um, almost like an expectation that there'll be like a mass exodus uh, from the career so all the people who maybe don't want to go back and aren't going to go back do retire they do what they maybe threaten to do or whatever and they retire and so if you have it stacked on the back end and you lose, you know, a large percentage of your workforce who was never going to go back to get a bachelor's and all of a sudden you've inflated your numbers. Um, so I imagine that's how they'll probably get their numbers or get close to their numbers. Uh, again, it was just a goal, uh, not a mandate. So, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, we all have the same, regardless of what side of the argument you're on, uh, we all want the same thing, and that is just the best possible, uh, you know, outcomes for our patient. We want to do what's best for our patients, and whether that's at an associate level or bachelor level or whatever, you know, um, I think as long as you're doing your part, you know, when things are mandated and it becomes laws or, or whatever, um, you know, you just kind of have to do it. Your, your hands get tied at that point. <clears throat> Um, I don't think it's a bad thing that they're pushing for a four-year program. Again, for me, it's just, uh, I just don't want to do it right now. I just got done with school. Um, I don't want to go back to school right now, especially, uh, you know, for me in my position. Um, I really don't like online school either. I really don't like writing papers. As you guys remember, I, my, my woes of writing um, from having to write one paper at <laughs> school. Uh, you know, I, I absolutely can't stand writing papers, and really, that's what a lot of uh, your bachelor's level stuff is, especially for online. I mean, that's the one way they really test your your, your knowledge, or, or at least grade you, is is through paper writing. So, uh, not that research isn't important. Uh, research is very important, but just uh, what are you researching? Um, so, from just a, a personal perspective, too. I mean, that's why I don't want to do it right now. Um, I'm absolutely terrified of having to write papers. Uh, I've gone through a lot of schooling. I already have some student loan debt. Uh, I just don't want any more right now, basically. 
you know, some people are like, well, it's only 10 grand or whatever to go through some of these BSRT programs. Like, yeah, well, is that a charity offer? You guys gonna give me 10 grand so I can go back to school? Cause otherwise, like, I don't know where I'm supposed to magically pull this out of, especially as someone who graduated and hasn't gotten a job yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much, uh, just wanted to get that out there. Maybe it'll generate some discussion um, I know I've had comments in the past about kind of similar to, to ask about BSRTs and should you do it or whatever. Um, again, I guess just to, to um, do a quick summary then, if whether you should or you shouldn't, if you're asking me, I'm going to tell you it depends. If you want to do it, do it, obviously. Don't. If you want to do something, why not just do it? Uh, do you need to do it? Uh, you know, you have to know your market. Um, whether that's where you live or where you plan to live, you need to do your research. Uh, you can't blame anyone else, you know, if you just graduated and want to move into the middle, the heart of a place that's not hurting for therapists, especially if you're moving into a saturated market with an associate degree and then you're going to like complain about not being able to get a job. That's probably on you a little bit. Um, you know, if you, you, you know, you got to know your market, do your own research um, and ask. There's all kinds of communities on the internet and on YouTube. Um, you know, this, I'm just one person's opinion on here. Uh, there's tons of Reddit and Facebook. Um, there, there, there's always people who can give you a perspective on things. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with furthering your education either. But, you know, understanding too that things happen like me. Like I have two kids. I don't want to be uh, in debt up to my eyeballs forever. And really right now, um, I'm just not in any particular mood to try to go back to school. Um, so... Anyways, guys, we're going to call that there. Uh, I'm going to try to get this edited and uploaded right now. So it is, uh, what, July 19th? Is that today? Yes, it's July 19th. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get this uploaded, edited and uploaded today. Uh, sorry for the hiatus, guys. Uh, I have some other things um, that I want to do some videos on. Maybe I'll even go crazy and shoot a couple more today. Those may maybe not get edited today, but um, guys, good to be back. Everyone take care. Have a great day.